Welcome to the Heal Your Heartbreak podcast with your host, Breakup Bestie, aka me, Kendra. Breakups are hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Each week, I will be taking you through a different topic as it relates to breaking up, healing from heartbreak, growing in your single life, dating, and getting back into happier and healthier relationships. The goal of this show is to provide support, hope, tips, and to remind you that above all, this too shall pass. Welcome back to another episode of the Heal Your Heartbreak podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about what to do if you have mutual friends with your ex. Now, the other night, I was doing a free live training for the women in my private Facebook group, which, by the way, if you are not already a part of, I cannot speak highly enough about it. And just to give you guys a little bit of background on the group, it is actually just for people who listen to this podcast and who follow me on Instagram. I wanted to be very intentional about this group and keep a really good, positive, and supportive culture going on in it. So you'll find so many women who are ready to give support, give advice. Uh, Women pop in there all the time to ask questions or seek encouragement. Maybe they will say, hey, I'm really thinking about texting my ex. Should I do it? And all the women will pop in and, and share their thoughts. So it is a very beautiful and supportive group. I've gotten so much great feedback about the quality of it and the help that it has been in women going through breakups. So if you're not already a part of the group, definitely recommend going in there. You can just search on Facebook Breakup Bestie Support Group and make sure that you list that you found it via my podcast. Because again, I do want to make sure that it is exclusive and just for women who you know want to do the work to get over their ex. So anyways, I was doing this live training in the private Facebook group, which I do every couple weeks, and women are able to submit their questions and I answer them live. So this was one of the questions that popped up. I have mutual friends with my ex. How do I handle that? And when you're in a relationship with someone for a long period of time, of course, there's going to be you know, a natural merging of your lives. You guys might pick up the same hobbies, start frequenting, this, frequenting the same places, and oftentimes you guys end up having the same friends. And then if a breakup happens, life changes so suddenly, and it's hard to know how to move forward and navigate that with things that you guys shared. And I know that this is a big panic point for people um, in terms of what to do if you guys have mutual friends, either from the time you were in a relationship or maybe you guys even had mutual friends from before you started dating. So in today's episode, I'm going to walk through how to handle it. And I first want to start off by saying this doesn't need to be something you're super concerned about. And what do I mean by that? I'm not trying to invalidate your feelings. It's definitely something that's a valid concern. However, you're dealing with so much other stuff. I don't want this to be a huge thing that you are dealing with because your biggest focus needs to be healing yourself, not how to like appease your ex's friends or figure out how to move forward with that. So I'm going to share six different tips that I want you to consider when you're trying to navigate this new normal within a friend group. So the first thing is don't rush it. And what do I mean by that? Basically take a break if you need to. So for example, if after the breakup, you maybe get invited to a birthday party and you know that your ex is going to be there, it's a lot of your mutual friends, If you're not feeling comfortable going, it's totally okay to, you know, I use this example, like message the person whose birthday it is and and tell them like, hey, I really want to celebrate you, but I'm just not quite ready to see my ex. Can I take you out to lunch? Can we do something just the two of us or something along those lines? But I think the biggest thing that I see is people try 
so hard to go back to business as usual. So they'll neglect their own feelings and just want life to go back to normal. So they'll rush into these situations where they might see their ex and they and it ends up being very hurtful. So it's completely okay to take a break from certain people, certain events. By missing an event, it's not going to be the end of the world. You can always catch up on stuff later on. So don't rush it and really pay attention to how you're doing and how going to a certain thing or seeing a certain person might affect your ability to heal. And this leads me into the second point, which is don't let your ego take over. I know for me, I have found myself in certain situations after a breakup where I've always been someone who's like, I can handle it. You know, it's not going to hurt me and really ego driven in that way. So if I got invited to something where I knew my ex would be there, I would say, I can totally handle it. It's not going to be that big of a deal. Like I'm strong enough to do this. And I think a lot of us do that. So I would find myself in situations where I saw my ex and, you know, the whole time I'm like, I can handle this. I can do this. I can do this. And then I would immediately leave and just burst into tears because the truth is I could not handle it. It's okay if you can't see your ex. Like it's okay if you're not ready to see them. And a lot of breakup recovery, we need to take our ego out of the picture and just listen to our feelings. So if you have like a gut feeling where you know that you're probably not ready, but your ego is trying to tell you like, you can go out there and show everyone that you're okay. I think sometimes we try to do that at our ex, like I can handle seeing you. You didn't hurt me that bad. But if they did hurt you that bad, that's okay too. And it's okay to bow out of certain things and, you know, do something different this weekend instead of going to that birthday party. So don't let your ego get in the way of a breakup in general. Ego is the thing that prevents us from reaching out to friends for help, for it prevents us from saying how we actually feel, and it can be really damaging to our ability to heal. So ego is not your amigo. I saw that on a shirt once and absolutely loved it. Okay, back on track. The third point, mute. you can mute your friends, your ex's friends, I should say, on social media. And I, you know, I'm, you don't need to block everyone that's in contact with your ex. However, if, you know, your friend, you're likely friends with like your ex's best friends, if you are following someone on social media that you know will probably post stories of your ex in it and it might, you know, trigger you to, I mean, of course it'll trigger you to see them, but if there are certain ones of his friends that are on social media, it's completely okay to mute them so you don't have to see that. Again, going back to our ego, this is not something that you should think that you should be able to handle because it is hard when we have to see that on a regular basis. It goes back to, you know, the no contact rule and like letting go of your ex on social media. It's okay to also do that to friends. It's okay to block them. But if you're not, if you don't want to do that, the mute button is a great option and it will prevent you from having to like come into some sort of contact with your ex while you're browsing social media. Okay, point number four is when it comes to your ex's friends. I think what happens is, you know, maybe we become friends with our ex's friends' wives or girlfriends and we develop a friendship with them. And it's not always necessarily a friendship that you want to continue. It might be, and it might be that you just need to take that pause, but there are probably people that you became friends with when you were with your ex that it doesn't necessarily make sense for you to continue that friendship. I think a lot of us believe that when we are letting go of certain friendships that it needs to be this, not dramatic, but it needs to be this like direct 
breaking up. Like it almost feels like we need to break up with that friend and let them know like, I can't see you anymore. It's too hard for me. What I have found is that a lot of the time it just happens naturally. So don't burden yourself with feeling like you need to have these dramatic conversations with certain people that you don't really think you can be friends with anymore. Honestly, what most of the time at least has happened to me is I just don't reach out to them. I'm not seeing them on a regular basis. And just naturally, we drift apart. And that's totally okay. That's like what happens, you know, through the seasons of life. And then on the other side of the coin, if there are certain friends that you picked up through being with your ex that you do want to maintain a friendship with, that's also okay. You can, you know, reach out to them separately and let them know, hey, I really value our friendship. You know, I know, you know, so-and-so and and I broke up, but I would love to continue a friendship with you. And when you're ready, you can, you know, continue that relationship. So it doesn't have to be so black and white where it's like I either have to inject myself into that friend group and get used to seeing my ex or I have to completely walk away from everyone. Nothing in life is ever as black and white as we tend to think it is. I think we all tend to look at things as black and white, but there is that gray area. And if you are doing the work and are in touch with yourself and your feelings, I think you'll be able to very intuitively decide who maybe to pull back from and just naturally drift away from and then who you can make that effort to continue the friendship with. I wanted to pop on here and interrupt the episode for a hot second and remind you that if you are going through a breakup or are still struggling with a past breakup, I have a step-by-step system to help you heal your heartbreak. I know oftentimes after a breakup, we feel completely blindsided and totally paralyzed and have zero idea how to move forward. With my online course, I take all of the guesswork out and show you exactly how you can move forward in your life and let go of your ex. I can promise you there is an easier way to go through a breakup, and it costs a lot less than what you're probably already spending trying to feel better. To learn more, go to HealYourBreakupCourse.com, and as a special offer to my incredible podcast listeners, use the code PODCAST for $25 off the course price. Now back to the episode. This brings me to my next point. If you are continuing friendships with people who are connected to your ex, it's very important that you don't utilize those friends as a way to keep tabs on your ex. We all want to know what our ex is up to. We want to know if they are struggling because we think that will make us feel better We want to know if they're back dating again. We really just would probably love to know any information about our ex most of the time. And we know we probably shouldn't, but it's just a natural feeling that we would love to know that kind of information. It's like the same feeling we get from gossip. But it is really important to not use friends as a way to like get intel. I remember... When uh, my ex and I broke up, I still was, you know, pretty close with one of his best friends and we would see each other occasionally. And I went up to him one time and I asked him how my ex was doing. And thank goodness he said, you know what, I'm, I don't think that's a smart idea for me to tell you that or for us to get into that. I'm friends with both of you and I just don't think it's a good idea. And at the time, I think I was number one embarrassed because I felt stupid for asking and then getting denied. But later on, I was very relieved because no matter what he said would have made me sad. If my ex was doing well, I would have been sad. If he was struggling, I would have been sad. So that is when I learned just to not ask those kind of questions. And I think we all know when we're like manipulating the conversation so it'll lead to that point. Just don't do it. If we want to really maintain friendships, that's totally okay. But if we're just wanting to, you know, I've seen this happen so many times and I've totally done it. We try to like inject ourselves into 
you know, certain friendships so we can feel closer to our ex. And that's not a good motive for friendship. That's, you know, in a certain way, you're just using them so you can have that connection. And that's going to hurt both sides. So before you start a friendship like that, make sure your motives are good and that you're not using them as a way to get back or get back into their lives or know something about them, just something to keep an eye on. And then the last thing, and this is, you know, sounds a little woo-woo, but just honestly, just let it flow. And what I mean by that is I think after, again, going back to that black and white thinking, I think after a breakup, we, we kind of feel like even if it's not a divorce, we feel like it has to almost be like a divorce of our lives. So I used to go to this thing every Friday night that my ex and I would go together. And I remember thinking like, I'm going to have to call him and we're going to have to like work out a schedule as to, you know, when I'm going to go and when he's going to go and it's going to have to be this big thing. Or we had kind of similar friend groups, so we're going to have to coordinate like who's going to which event and which one I'm going to have to sit out from. In my mind, I had worked up so many potential issues in the future as to when I was going to have to see him or when we were going to have to switch off with things. And basically, I just made it so overcomplicated in my mind that it was just another thing that I was having to deal with with this breakup, which again, like we don't have to add extra burden. What ended up happening, and I think this happens a lot, I didn't say anything. I had a mentor tell me, you know, before you go launch into this like big plan of yours of having to like divide events and divide friend groups, she said, why don't you just wait and see what happens? And what happened was, I felt like I had a very close, you know, mutual friend group with my ex. I just never saw him. I pretty much like went about my life as usual and just never ran into him. You know, he decided not to go to certain events just on his own. And I kind of did the same. And I just went on, you know, focusing on myself, healing myself. And our lives just you know, naturally drifted apart and naturally separated. And I'm not even saying that I had to like end relationships in order for that to happen. I swear to you, it just happened completely naturally. And I think that's what happens when we stay in our own lane, like the universe kind of just takes care of it for us. And I've seen that happen in so many other, you know, friend groups and seeing other friends go through breakups if we're not, you know, making this huge big deal out of things, then it just, you know, then it just naturally happens. And yes, I had to say no to certain things because I knew I wasn't going to be ready. And eventually, you know, I did run into him very randomly, but it was a long time after the breakup. So by the time I finally saw him, it wasn't like this, oh my God, I can't handle this anymore. It, you know, it was like brought to me when I was ready. So before you launch into this like grand plan on how you guys are going to have to divide up friends and divide up parties, I would encourage you to stay in your lane of healing and just focus on yourself. And it's okay also to just focus on friendships that maybe you don't share with your ex and really just focus on your female friendships instead of, you know, doing these big group things. You know, maybe quarantine is a gift in that way that we're not having to go to these big gatherings. But before you launch into your grand plan and overcomplicate it and add more weight to the burden that you're already going through, just trust that it will work out naturally. And I do realize that when you know, a divorce happens and it gets a little bit more complicated with children. Yes, this can get a little bit messier, but just stick to these, you know, I can boil down everything I said to a couple tips. Trust your feelings, listen to your feelings, don't go to things you're not comfortable with. Don't let your ego take hold, check your motives, and it remember it's okay to say no to things in the beginning. You guys know me, you know how important I believe friendships are, but I also believe that friendships come into our lives at 
certain points for particular reasons. So maybe some of the friendships you picked up when you were with your ex are meant to stay in your life forever. And that's amazing. Maybe they were just that season that you were with your ex. And that's amazing too. You know, we all, we can all look back and see like friends that we've lost in the past and it wasn't some like huge deal. It just drifted naturally. And I'm sure we can look back on those super fondly. It doesn't have to be this big dramatic thing. So stick to those tips and I will be back here next week with another episode. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you loved it, I hope you'll leave me a review and share with your friends. If you're interested in learning more about my course, Heal Your Breakup, where I take you step-by-step through my entire healing process, you can find more info at my website, breakupbestie.com. And if you're new, don't forget to join our private Facebook group so you can connect with other women going through the same thing and seek support. You can search Breakup Bestie Support Group on Facebook to join. Lastly, if you're not already following me on Instagram, I share new tips and support every single day. You can find me at your breakup bestie. Most importantly, hang in there, stay connected with loved ones, be nice to yourself, and remember it's all going to be okay. I promise.